Welcome back to Energy Tony with Liz. In today's video, I chat to Sharon Cohen, who is a dedicated Pangu Shengong teacher and practitioner. And during our chat, Sharon explains how Pangu Shengong was crucial for recovering her health after severe adrenal burnout and fatigue, and how she then went on to achieve a black belt in Kung Fu after her recovery. So enjoy. How did you first hear about Pangu Shengong? Um, and, and what were the circumstances that led you to it? So my first introduction to Pangu was through my teacher, my esteemed beloved teacher, Paul Fraser, who came to Montreal to offer a workshop and taught the form. So I initially learned it from him. I started practicing diligently every day and noticed the effects pretty immediately. My most interesting phenomenon which i see in students to this day was uncontrollable yawning for the first many months i just couldn't get my mouth open wide enough to get my yawns out and it just didn't stop for, for weeks and maybe even months <laughs> and I learned in time that it was my nervous system readjusting and a lot of releasing of whatever was stuck in my energetic being. Um, and so I initially learned the moving form. And after I can't remember how long I traveled to North Carolina to take a workshop with Master O and redid that and did the non moving form and eventually became an instructor. Mm hmm. So you've taken quite the journey then. Um, so how many years has it been since you first? I've been practicing since 2011, and I think I became a teacher maybe a year after that. Mm -hmm. So you must have had very profound uh, shifts to make you want to go all the way to be a teacher. Um, were there health challenges before you you started Pangu Shengong? So I suffered a very big burnout in my 30s, uh, which was very debilitating. Uh, I had chronic fatigue. I couldn't sleep. My organs started failing. My kidneys were not OK. My adrenal system was not OK. And so, yes, I, I emerged from that at some point, but I had some residual issues uh, health wise. And I think um, one of the unfortunate lessons that I was taught through that illness was that I had a limited chi capacity mm -hmm. and a limited battery power that I would have to learn how to cope with throughout my life. And that was extremely debilitating and demoralizing because I'm a very active physical person and the notion of having limitations for the rest of my life was quite depressing. And uh, I can share with you that I now have a black belt in Kung Fu. And wow. so that was not true. And part of my journey of rehabilitation was through this form. Because it's not just a spirit form. It's, it addresses the body, the mind, the spirit all of our components mm -hmm. in one 21 minute practice, which is quite extraordinary. And I can tell you that I try very, very hard not to miss a day. I've practiced in airports and on airplanes and trains and walking down the street. I do it every chance that I can and I don't really care where I am or who sees me. Yeah, uh, It's just become a very big part of my day and of my life. And I enjoy sharing it with others and teaching it to others and seeing how incredible the results can be through diligent practice. The word gong means diligent practice over time. It means something that we dedicate ourselves to over an extended period of time. So I took it on. Uh, I've had other gongs in my life, but this is one that I am never giving up. Mm -hmm. so do you still practice other kinds of Qigong or is this, this is the I only practice, Yes, I practice Qigong, other forms of Qigong. I teach Qigong. 
Um, I'm very um, inspired by the idea that we are empowered to take control of our destiny and particularly of our emotional, spiritual, and mental well-being. And this is the kind of all-in-one package of this of this form is that really addresses all aspects of our humanness. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm imagining you've probably read The Path of Life quite a few times. I have. And what were your initial impressions of all the fantastical descriptions of, of existence? So in my previous um, iteration, before I became a healing arts practitioner and teacher, I was a writer and I studied literature for many years. And in my literature studies, I came across the phrase suspension of disbelief, which is essential for us to read any novel or watch any movie that is not based on true events. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt as I approached this book to begin with, the cosmology and the creation, the creation story is very different from anything that we know in the West, any of the monotheistic religions. And it's a little bit difficult at first to wrap your brain around it. I just want to say this. It's not necessary to get on board with all of that. Mm -hmm. So even people from different religions who are devout, as long as you can connect with the idea of the divine as it speaks to you, mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters what type of creation story you subscribe to or what kind of divine being you believe in. If you can connect with that, feeling of divinity and the idea of the divine that speaks to you personally, I think that's all that's required. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that's mostly because there, there's a very phys like a tangible physical result when you practice Pangu Shengong? Like that's the, in one way, all the evidence that anyone needs in, in one way? I think that even the skeptics, if they commit to it and they give it a month or two or three or even less, I think the results happen even faster than that. I think it also depends on how we're doing when we begin practicing. If we're really, really unwell, it might take longer. But I think the, the, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. As soon as you start feeling things shift in your being, in your physical body, for me, I felt much calmer. Um, my fuse, so to speak, got longer. So if I could blow my fuse maybe a little faster at 10, 15 years ago, I'm pretty calm and peaceful these days. And it takes a lot to take me out of my equilibrium. And I think this is a big part of it. And my, my battery power, as I mentioned earlier, is stronger. And my immune system is stronger. And I think just as a, an organism, I'm just stronger and better for it. Mm, fantastic. I can, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> um, what were some of the challenges that you had along the way? So once you learned the practice and you started on the journey, um, the ups and downs that, that came with that, what, what were some of the down points that may have discouraged you a little bit? Well, I'm lucky in the sense that I grew up with a lot of discipline. Uh, I was a ballerina for many years. And so I had discipline built into me. And so for me, it was much easier to commit. There are moments and days where I don't feel like practicing. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. So I might not practice at my usual time in the morning. If my day becomes jumbled, then I'll practice later in the day. I've found that, um, I, I want to call it pushing myself, but holding myself to the practice, mm -hmm. rain or shine, no matter where I am, I do it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that 
because I've been practicing for so long and the, the effects are so pronounced, it's a no brainer for me. I don't really struggle anymore with committing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you must have had quite a dramatic result very early on to, to have that faith to really want to commit to the practice. I think the, I was inspired mainly by my teacher, Paul, mm -hmm. who um, I just think so highly of and trust implicitly and hearing his story of recovery because he was also had a very big health challenge mm -hmm. and hearing his story of journey to wellness and how important this is in his life that was very inspiring for me and also was very helpful in keeping me on track mm -hmm. that makes sense i've heard a lot about paul fraser um because the way i was introduced to pangu was um through keith Cooley. Do you know Keith Cooley? Yeah. Yes. So, and I know he's had a lot to, I think he was the, he started Pangu because of uh, Paul Fraser as well. So um, yeah, so that's interesting. And we're and both, uh, we're both students of Paul's. Right. And yeah, we so, practiced and studied together. Okay. Interesting. Um, so my experience was similar in that I didn't know Paul, but I, I knew Keith, you know, through um, Ness Health company and um and one reason that kept me going is the belief in what Keith was was telling me it was that trust um towards the teacher so I'm starting to realize that that level of trust to, to the teacher is very important um, not to mention when I eventually met Master O um the what what Master O exudes and the love and compassion and kindness and dedication to his students were so extraordinary and just the light that comes out of him is so palpable so that was another if i needed any reinforcement mm -hmm. then that, that was it mm -hmm. so you've been to the ranch a couple of times then i have not yet been to the ranch i got on board way before master o uh, moved to to that ranch mm -hmm. um or did I? You might have to edit that out. But um, I have not been, and it's a big dream of mine to go and spend mm -hmm. some time. I just want to get to America so I can go and meet Mr. O, my Master O. <laughs> um, hopefully, maybe one day we'll do that together and be there at the same time. That would be fantastic. Um, so when, when you started, how long do you think it took to... Um, for your health challenges to iron out, roughly, what was the point where you thought, okay, yep, yeah, this has definitely made a big difference to me? I think that as soon as the yawning stopped and I reached a kind of a, a different baseline uh, and my battery just started charging better. Mm -hmm. That's the main, I think the main difference that I felt was that I had more stamina, I had more clarity, and as I mentioned earlier, I had more inner peace and patience, and I was able to meet other people with more of an open heart. So all of the effects were, were felt pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And um, in terms of teaching students, what kinds of experiences have stood out to you with your teaching experience? Um, so going back to the idea of trust, I think it's really important when offering this to students uh, that they're really open to it. Mm -hmm. Because I have taught students who, perhaps because of the story behind it, had trouble connecting, perhaps because of the discipline that's required, fell off the wagon. I think it's really important to find the students or have them find you rather uh, mm -hmm. and teach the students who are for it, mm -hmm. that have the openness to, to this kind of practice and um, a willingness to commit themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see how that would be important. Why do you think humans get unwell? 
Well, if we think about Chinese medicine, um, it's because their qi is not flowing properly. Mm -hmm. But what and there's that? Uh, there's there oh well that's because we don't live our lives properly. Mm -hmm. Either we're not in alignment with our destiny, with our purpose. Uh, we don't eat properly. We don't sleep properly. We don't take care of ourselves as well as we could or should. Mm -hmm. And and when we continue to behave like this, our our body is a magical organism and it's programmed to heal itself all the time it's doing that all the time but when we live in certain ways that are um not life promoting but life negating then the body has a harder time um restoring itself on a regular basis and then things start to break down mm -hmm. and then the chi starts being able to move properly and mm -hmm. get can get stuck in different places and um, we can have obstructions of chi in different places in our body which can cause uh unwellness of the body and the spirit and the mind mm -hmm. do you think it's also kind of like a it's almost like a crisis of consciousness that that gets a person to a place where they they are experiencing unwellness well, it's interesting that you should mention that because my big health crisis required a shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. It required me to come to terms with, with the fact that I was not living my best life. Mm -hmm. I was not taking care of myself properly. And also in terms of my destiny, uh, I had to start questioning my path. Mm -hmm. And so as challenging as that was, in the end, it was a gift to me because otherwise, who knows where I would be now. Mm -hmm. Where does surrender come into to this picture? I think surrender is a prerequisite for change. Uh, surrendering to what is mm -hmm. and really accepting what is is the only thing that can facilitate a shift, a change. Mm -hmm. As long as we're fighting it and having all these negative feelings of resentment and anger, and this is not fair, and why is this happening to me, and all the things that we tend to say to ourselves when we're unwell, um, once we come to a place of, okay, this is happening to me, there must be a reason for it, and now I'm committed to my wellness. That's mm -hmm. the shift. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well said. I like that. Um, if how how is this? So when you started Pangu Shengong, thinking back to the dynamics in your various relationships that you um, moved amongst, how did it shift the relationships that you had? Well, as I mentioned my heart became softer mm -hmm. and more open mm -hmm. and I became um, just softer as a person mm -hmm. and um, not that I wasn't loving and compassionate before mm -hmm. but there's um, a level of loving kindness that this has um, really elevated in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did people comment about changes that you that they noticed in you they did they did and to this day uh i i receive comments from people who maybe haven't seen me in a while or um are very attuned to me um they notice the changes mm -hmm. fantastic um and one last question if there was someone who was thinking about taking this practice on what would your advice be? My advice would be dedicate yourself to this practice for, let's say, three months and see what it does for you. It's 21 minutes a day. Everybody has 21 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth the experiment. It, it, for me, um, all of these healing arts that I teach and practice 
and when I work with clients, I always say, let's think of this as an experiment. Your body is the lab and we're going to see what happens. Mm. Let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. I think approaching this practice with curiosity um, and an open mind and an open heart uh, are really the, the most important things. Mm. I love it.